What's happening? This is Avedon, and welcome to another episode of the BFB Podcast. Today, I am joined by a very special guest who is a creative wellness coach who has helped many people throughout the areas of New York City, specifically Queens, New York. And today, she is here to help us understand more about the importance of art therapy and wellness in the creative industry. Please welcome Tahina Pierce. Hi, everyone. I'm happy to be here um, today and just to talk to you um, more about creative wellness and how it's relevant um, to the industry. Cool, cool. Thank you for coming on. And I know this was something we planned for a little bit now, but I'm glad to have you on as a guest. And you yourself, you're a creator. I see that, you know, you're a painter. You've been involved in the creative industry for a while, correct? Uh, Yeah, I would probably say since I was a a child uh, my mom actually kept paintings of like stuff that I've done since I was a kid so I mean those stuff you can laugh about now um but then like to imagine like you know as a child painting or finger painting or something to now say that like you know you're an artist or to have you know your work posted up you know somewhere or um even in you know in the digital space as well so that's cool that's cool um for for you has been painting for me it's well, okay, let me let me not say it has been painting. My, my mom tried to get me in, in painting for a while. Like, there's still pigs I have for when I was a child. <laughs> still, in, in, so you get it, you get it, right? So, so I still I get it. I've been doing painting. Didn't I've been painted in a while, but it's something that it is relaxing for me. But um, I died more into music, you know, growing up. So I can see, you know, as a fellow creative, I appreciate the words you have used to describe yourself on your website as a virtual art assistant. Like the play on words is cool. As someone who used to write, I caught that. I was like, oh, that's cool. So could you perhaps unpack a bit on like the relation of that, how that relates to the services you provide with your business? Um, sure. So, you know, it's funny. Most people don't catch it. Um, so I appreciate that. <laughs> um, but yeah, virtual art assistant. Um, you know, funny enough, I started this business about four or five years ago and I like relaunched it uh, recently. So um, and when I first started, I didn't have um, the direction or the understanding that I have now behind it. Right. Mm. So um, the name came to me, um, but I didn't understand the depth behind it until until now right so um i think for me uh being a creative across the board really um so it's not just uh painting i think that's what most people know me for um but i've sung i've danced um you know i write um poetry you know so i think across all forms really um that i've had the opportunity to experience which i can appreciate um you know i've been in plays i've done a whole bunch of things so which I mean, I think I've stuck with painting, so that's great. Um, but it, it's the aspect of knowing that um, the creative, right? That's where you know, kind of where we we're terming a lot of, or where, where we term um, a lot of uh, the arts <laughs> mm-hmm. um, incorporated into that. Um, so um, the person or the creative, um, it it spans so many so many mediums and spectrums that I think when you think about art or the arts, um, it would all kind of fall under that. And um, me being a virtual art assistant is that opportunity to support um, that creative or like that entrepreneur um, in their business, right? Or in their um, in their life, really, right? Because that's when, you, when you're looking at a creative wellness or being a creative wellness coach, that's how that ties into it, right? So, you know, not only can I coach you through, you know, difficulties that you might be having and give you a strategy um, into, you know, making those improvements or those steps towards wellness, overall holistic wellness. Um, But then now, specifically in your business, um, I probably have done some portion of your business somewhere along the line (laughs) and I could be able to help you and support you in that way. So even though I'm not saying that I work in all spaces, no, but I probably have some sort of experience and can at least give you direction or instruction. And if not, I can direct you to someone who can get you right, right on the right track. Um, so it's like, uh, they go hand in hand. I think that that's so when I think about that, um, I didn't know today that I would be a creative wellness coach or that, you know, virtual art assistant would, uh, be reborn into what it is now. Um, and, tying that uh creative strategy together right so a lot of times when i am on the business side of things or i'm in like 
the corporate side, I refer to myself as a creative strategist. Right. So I wouldn't necessarily say that, oh, I'm a creative wellness curator, but I would say I'm a creative strategist. And it falls along those same lines. It's bridging that gap between being a creative, which I already am, and then the business side of it, which I've gone to school for. I've been in marketing. I've been in corporate America. So I've also had that side of it. And a lot of times when you are either on one side, you don't have the other. Um, so it's like, if I'm a creative, I might not have the business acumen, but if I am a business person, I might not have the creative aspect. And so I bridge the gap between the two. And so um, it, I'm able to provide strategy from both ends, looking at things from different perspectives and being able to bring that to them. Okay, so I would say definitely it's it shows that like you you've been through a place where you are definitely multifaceted in the creative arts, which is something that I myself have dealt with. And it's one of the common challenges is knowing how to place each of your talents correctly in 24 hours in a day. And like another side of me, which some people know, it's like I get into digital art design. It's like, as we spoke, you know, off air, it's like I just got After Effects, but I've gotten to use it Blender. And it's like, when you start start creating your own world in one area, it's like, how can I put this in other areas? But more so, it's rather impressive that you've been able to use this in a way where you can direct other people to a place where they can accelerate their business. So you mentioned like being through corporate America and working through businesses. And you're someone who shown that you work holistic health within the arts, which is incredibly impressive. What has been one of the most common issue your clients have presented you with in regards to helping them with their mental health? I think oftentimes what I see is um, anxiety um, that is often prevalent, I think, um, across the board, because not only for a creative, but also an entrepreneur, you are putting yourself out there, you're putting your new idea out there, you're putting, um, and especially for the artist or the creative, you're putting out, and I'm not you know, I say creative and it, you know, covers the whole spectrum. That's why I'm just using that terminology. But um, as a creative, you're putting out, you know, something that might be very close or near and dear to your heart. And you never really know what the response is going to be or what the return is going to be. And especially with social media. And I mean, don't get me wrong. Social media is such a great tool for businesses and for artists and for entrepreneurs. But I think that it's like, oh, if you don't get a certain amount of likes or if you don't get, you know, a certain amount of shares or um, and then all, you know, then that's like your validation. And I think that that becomes, um, you know, an issue in that sense. Right. So there's anxiety. Um, a lot of times um, there's a lot of past traumas. So I think that maybe I'll do a top three. So there is um, anxiety, past traumas and past traumas could be, um, you know, a range. It could be childhood, but then it could also be that, you know, maybe you previously had a business partner or an artist friend that like, you know, walked away from you or whatever. So there, I mean, for that, it's a little bit more in depth, obviously, but you know, a lot of times we don't necessarily um, work through the traumas that we're dealing with. Um, even COVID, right? Now we're two almost two years <laughs> Dude, right? I have to, like, let's, see, let's count how many <laughs> um, now we are several years in and after something is, um, you know, oftentimes with trauma and oftentimes when you're dealing um, with an issues, the way that your body works is that it knows how to respond or it rather it it's sort of like an innate thing. It knows how to respond. But after a while, um, it knows that like, OK, you're in danger. So your blood starts pumping more. You'll get, you know, heightened this adrenaline. But once it stays there right? Trauma. Because then it doesn't know how to reset itself. It doesn't know how to um, re restore or, or it doesn't know how to get back down to that restoration of its um, normal balance. And so, um, right. So again, trauma, right? So it's a thing where like now we've been in this for three years. Are we looking at COVID trauma? Yes. So you know what I mean? And even though it might, it, you know, it might look small on a scale of a childhood trauma doesn't negate the trauma, you know? Um, and then I think another, another one other thing that I've seen very prevalent is um, their identity. I would say that. Um, I think that is very um, heavy. Um, you know, that can also be talked about, but I think that 
that ties a lot into business and it ties a lot into your finances. It ties into everything that you're doing. So as an artist and as a entrepreneur, as a creative, if you are unsure of your identity, um, it hinders you from being able to do almost anything. And I'm not going to say like, I'm not going to say like debilitating in that sense, but it definitely um, has its own issues that it comes with. So yeah. Def That's what I've seen a lot. <laughs> Definitely. I appreciate you sharing that because it's like, you're right. It's like COVID, COVID trauma, COVID depression. It's like it has hit and impacted so many people, myself included at one point. And it's like, I think yeah. a lot of people working from home, if you're so used to being out and about and you're, it's one thing if you, you choose to work from home, but you're kind of like forced to, mm -hmm. in a sense, it can create a sense of like, a cabin fever if you will where certain people may not necessarily know how to move past what they're going through and you know there's definitely different forms of therapy for with that and with that i wanted to ask do you believe because of covid it created a place for art therapy to be in the, in the industry um absolutely i will say that um you know art therapy is still a new form right it's only about um 40 years Mm -hmm. old um give or take so um and don't quote me on that <laughs> i'm not specific uh, but i think it's about the 1970s or so so um but um it's still so new that you know a lot of people don't know that it exists and so um i think even for me um i first learned about it um about i would say probably now about eight years ago and i actually worked for um and art therapist uh, company. And that was kind of my first lead into, um, into art therapy. I didn't know that it was a thing. And I also didn't know um, what it entailed. And I actually worked for um, special needs um, adult homes. So I would travel, actually I was a traveling, um, I would say art therapist at that time, um, or rather art therapist assistant, because I would travel with the actual art therapist and I would go to weekly sessions and um, I was being trained at that time, right? So I was being trained in art therapy. I was being trained in music therapy. And then I was also being trained in sensory therapy, which is actually really, um, really good for those that um, deal with autism and special needs. So a lot of times when people ask me my focus um, in that space, I often tell them that it's for the special needs adults and kids. Um, but of course, my services, you know, range. Um, but... I will say that COVID has opened up a space in order to um, now explore um, creativity in a much more unique way and recognize that it helps people to process their emotions. It, help pe it helps people to process their trauma. It helps people to process um, even identity. I think that anything that you might be dealing with, you could find um, an art therapy exercise. You can find a creative way of being able to deal with it. And it doesn't have to be based in standard therapy. And don't get me wrong, absolutely st standard therapy. And I'm not saying um, to negate it or to let go of it, but I think that art therapy um, is that is that um, not necessarily the in-between because it doesn't say, um, because art therapy is still your, once you're an art therapist, you're able to diagnose people. But then now in order to diagnose them, and not diagnosed in, in a form of like, you know, they have a disease or whatever, but you can recognize um, trauma and you can recognize these areas and let them know, hey, these are the steps that we can take, but you can now use art forms instead of it being a uh, standard uh, conversation. So I see, I've seen, you know, for me, like when I was in high school, I was a part of um, drama. So I actually ended up, you know, doing a play. And I think that, you know, when I look at that and if I was a high school student and being involved in, you know, that, so everyone might not have the opportunity to be a part of a play, but do you play drums? Mm -hmm. Do you sing? Do you write? And I mean, even if you don't do these things, having the opportunity to do it is so healing. Um, I think even just um, hitting a drum and I think that, you know, that's such a simple um, form, but there's so much science behind it that, um, leads into letting you know that you know art forms and using art therapy um i think that it should become a standard and i think that it should be included you know across the board so perfect so since you feel it should become a standard what are some of the industries you observe that need this right now 
Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, so one for sure would be the healthcare industry. Mm-hmm. I mean, number one. I think that um, our healthcare professionals have been running on a thousand for three years. Can you imagine that? You know what I mean? So it's, uh, yes, them. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, there's more, obviously, I think for our youth as well, the kids, uh, the seniors, right? Because um, I think for me, I am, you know, in my early 30s, I am pretty healthy. <laughs> I'm just going to, you know, but my point is I'm able to go, I'm, I'm able to get out and about, you know, so I think for our seniors, when we're looking at that, they've been indoors. A lot of um, their centers have been shut down. Um, a lot of their activities that they might look forward to being able to do, they're not able to do. And a lot of stuff hasn't open back up for them either so you know that even though the you know we're going back to school we're going back to work the seniors are definitely an area that has been forgotten um and so and again for the youth i think that the reason why um you know it's funny because um actually a principal had reached out to me recently and was saying hey my kids need attention and i'm like okay well can you just you know delve into that a little deeper for me and she's like yeah no they are just you know, they just need more focus and more attention. And I think that that's another area, right, that you're looking at that now these kids that are, you know, in school or virtual, (laughs) because it depends, I don't know, you know, depending on where you live at, but um, they need it as well, right? Because they need to now be able to process their emotions um, through art. And it doesn't have to necessarily be painting, right? Because even though that might be my focus or that might be my favorite thing, that doesn't mean that we cannot open them up to this whole world of being able to incorporate that. And it's not to say that now if we're doing an ELA lesson, that the arts cannot be incorporated into it. Absolutely, it could be. And it's just a means of now recognizing, um, and you know what that terminology is called, is called social emotional arts, right? And it was coined by uh, UCLA Arts. Um, And so when we're looking at that, it's taking those social and emotional learning objectives Mm -hmm. and placing an art medium to it. And then now you have social emotional arts. And that's helping them to now still follow the guidelines that uh, the schools are putting in place for social emotional learning, um, but incorporating arts into it. And so... Um, so yeah, so that's another place to, to to look into. And then, like I said, for our healthcare, our healthcare um, workers, um, I mean, I think they they should be on the top of the list. You know, it's funny, um, and you know, I think when we talked more about it um, before when I was reading about um, you know mental health and how you need to take care of yourself first. It's very difficult, especially within the healthcare industry. I think, mm-hmm. and I know for me, I don't have a lot of experience in it, but I can recognize and know that they're caring for everyone nonstop. I mean, some of them, um, you know, they'll, you know, of course, stay extra hours, they're going to come in early, they're going to do so much to make sure because they have a compassion for people, which don't get me wrong, absolutely. But then it's like, well, when are you setting aside time to take care of yourself? And then what happens, you know, when you get sick, who do you have taking care of you? So I think that um, they should be on the top, I think it should be mandatory. Um, almost that they have to set aside and it doesn't have to obviously be necessarily art therapy. I'm all for it. Yes, do art therapy. (laughs) Um, But my whole point is I think it should be mandated um, almost across the board because um, they are the ones that are caring for everyone else. And so if they are not cared for for themselves, um, they are not able there. I mean, you know, we talk about this all the time that you can't, you know, pour from an empty cup and like these types of terminologies. But I recently was watching on Facebook, which I do do and Instagram, but it was basically just a video showing that you know pouring from an empty cup it's empty nothing can come out of it but if it's full and you're now pouring into someone else um that is also full what does it do it starts to now pour over into the next person and into the next person yeah and then you see this this cycle right of full people healed people healthy people and i think that um you know uh the schools i think that healthcare, um education these are all areas that we need to start looking into how we can bring in this aspect of creative wellness because it doesn't have to necessarily just be the typical, like like we said, standard anymore. That's good. And I agree. Cause it's like, it goes with the old saying, it's like it takes a village, you know, yeah. to raise a child. And it's like, we can't, you know, as you said, I love the reference of where you pour a cup into another full cup and it creates an overflow. And that overflow spills over into so many other people and 
that overflow, if you want to just take even further than that, that's what creates the water that's needed for the good ground to plant the seeds that have already been planted there. Sometimes people, the, the seeds that have that been planted in people for years won't happen until the overflow of two people who are obedient happened. So it's like, that's why I, I definitely appreciate the, the field and the approach that you, you know, your company are going with that. And it makes me want to ask, it's like, what are, like, if you work with small business owners, I'm correct? Yes, yes. Cool. So what are a few blind spots you've noticed, like, small business owners tend to have when it comes to maintaining proper healthy boundaries between them and their businesses um that they don't have any <laughs> i think that um you know <laughs> yeah i mean it's hard to say but like most times i think that as an entrepreneur or even as like a startup a lot of times when you're first like starting your business you just kind of assume that you have to kind of have that like hustle mentality and i'm not saying don't hustle or go after what it is that you want or what it is that you know you're looking to complete but i think that um the hustle mentality becomes negative when it's now you know detrimental to your health right so and i'm talking about like the overall health right because if we're looking at you know the areas of wellness we're looking at emotional um financial intellectual physical social spiritual we're covering across the board um you have to note and recognize that there has to be boundaries set up and that is um specifically for your business so as much as you want to say like you know you're an entrepreneur that's great but then also and i mean it's like okay we, we don't want to have like you know the standard nine to five that's fine but you also have to have a you know time to rest you also have to have time to work on your emotional and mental health you can't just say that like okay i'm gonna hustle and grind and then you don't actually have you know like a plan set in place or a timeline or and pretty much anything so i think that and i mean it's 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 a difficult place to be i think because when you are launching something new like like i said you're in that space of just like oh i have to do everything right now right this instant and i mean we already are in an instant <laughs> instant time right everything has to come up we don't even have um a longer mindset of 30 seconds you know or 15 seconds so um yeah i know right um but it's just a means of being intentional about setting that time and i think for everyone timing can look different but it could be that you know you need um a longer morning right because now you need to do meditation or you need to go work out and i mean these are the hard things right the the, the hard part isn't the grind it's the actual maintenance of your overall holistic self and i think that for me um when i'm looking at creative wellness i love to tie it back into that because when you start to think about more creative ways that you can work on your wellness then it doesn't become as difficult or you find the thing that you love to do and you combine that right or you just you know you kind of kill two birds with one stone you know sort of thing so i think um when you're looking at it that way it makes it a lot easier and i think like i said because people um don't necessarily know what is creative wellness or art therapy or how that can tie into their everyday life this is how it ties into it you know so it's like if you're a poet make that time to write every single day you know because that is your meditative time that is the time that you're focusing in on your own mental health to make sure that you're well enough to service others and you know it goes across the board same thing for spiritual or emotional or anything else but it's um the intentional and it's the hard part because a lot of times we don't already have you know healthy um healthy habits in place or healthy um mindsets in place you know and so um that's the part that takes the work but i think once you actually build out like a routine or once you build out a uh, the healthy boundaries right that we, we're talking about once you pull those out it makes it a lot easier um i think that um you know it ties into the sense of recognizing kind of the grace over the grind um and recognizing that you have to um which is also a really good book by the way throw that out there <laughs> but um uh, yeah grace over grind um i forgot who it's by but i'll um we'll, we'll tag it somewhere um but yeah, it's recognizing that, that you don't have to always be about that, like, hustle and bustle mentality, but recognizing um, that you also have to make time to take care of yourself. Um, and of course, people have families, of course, people have so many things. But I think that 
is it more worth it to you to take, uh, you know, 15 or 20 minutes to, you know, do your early morning meditation or your late night prayer or now suffer throughout the week because you didn't make that decision, you know, to get up a few minutes earlier to now know, okay, I am well and structured for my day, or are you just going to kind of, you know, roll out of bed and then just hope and wish. But that's, you know, so that's why I said, it's all about, you know, being intentional in that. And I think, you know, at the beginning we started, um, it's like, they don't have boundaries set up, you know, they'll take calls all hours of the night, or they're like I said, it's that grind mentality. The, the person is still going to be there. You know what I mean? Instagram. And I think for me, I had to actually learn that myself, which is, you know, something I can talk about now, but I go offline once a week. Um, and I do that because, um, you know, I run and I'm a part of a community group. And so, you know, it's for us, we have to be online, you know, kind of all the time um, connecting with our members and that's fine. And I know a lot of people are running their social medias and running those types of things, but uh, you know, before social media, we were offline, <laughs> you know what I mean? And I think that I'm, you know, we're in the, I think we're close in age, but we're in the middle. So we know what it was like to like not have cell phones, not have the internet, um, but then to now have it, but it's to make that adjustment, right? So I do go offline, offline, like literally no, like kind of social media, I pre-schedule, you know, my posts and stuff like that. And then if I happen to go on my phone, okay, I'll connect with a few people, you know, or chat or whatever. But my point is that like the internet's not going anywhere. Your social media isn't going anywhere. You taking a little bit extra time to, like I said, make that me time. So everyone might not have a whole day that they can go offline, but can you go offline for an hour or can you, um, you know, go work out and it doesn't have to be that. Can you paint today? Can you sing today? Can you, you know, throw in some art therapy somewhere in there? Um, that is the important part of it. And then, of course, like we said, the boundaries of saying, hey, I'm not going to take calls after this time or I'm going to set a bedtime so I can get up on time or whatever else it is. But like I said, that's the hard part. And I think that because it's hard, <laughs> not everyone is um, open to uh, to doing the hard thing. Absolutely. It's like discipline is a key fact. It's like it's where we get even the word disciple from. It's like you have to be disciplined. You have to get a, a disciplined lifestyle. And it's like, for me, one of the things I started doing was I turn off my phone after a certain time of the night, I turn off my phone. Cause I rule in my mind, any emergency, the people who need the emergency in the house will be right now. <laughs> so anybody <laughs> else, it could wait until I turn this phone on in the morning. And it's like, I leave my phone in a different room mm. then I go to sleep. If I, if I if I could keep it. So it's like when I wake up, the first thing I'm not doing is powering on my phone. It's like mm -hmm. the, when I wake up, I have that moment to pray. I have that moment to just be still in a moment. And it's like, as someone to myself, it's like, it's the, the creative part that we would be used for relaxation. On a previous episode, I, I, I had to really express this like, yo, you're nine to five supplements for you to have that safe space to create because mm -hmm. once you make that creative space the nine to five the thing that brings in the baking now that's not your safe space anymore now that's your business framework and you got to now find a way to create a safe space for you to do this as a business and create the safe space to do it just for your leisure as you've always have been mm -hmm. and that's the hard part that I had, that's the hard lesson I had to learn over the over these past two years, because when you're working from home to COVID and everything, it is invigorating when you could find like, wait, I can do all my creative works at home and work from home, but you yeah. have to you have to be able to balance everything so you don't get Absolutely. overtaken. So I yeah, but I think that's also adding in, right? So it's being intentional about adding in that time, right? And I mean, like, you know, everyone doesn't like to follow a schedule or whatever, and that's perfectly okay. But now, like, be intentional in that sense of saying, okay, well, every morning I'll do this. So it doesn't have to say specifically a time. So maybe, you, you know, you don't have a time that maybe you get up in particular, if I'm speaking towards entrepreneurs or artists. But what I will say is that like, okay, every night I have to, you know, read a book or every morning I, you know, have to make sure I do my meditation or whatever else it is that you do. Um, but one thing I did want to mention is that, um, you know, creative productivity is a thing. And so when you recognize that, you also can recognize that um, your creativity can be taken into every area and space in your life so that you don't have to necessarily, um, I guess, leave it <laughs> in one place or another, but you have to be intentional about, 
intentional about setting aside the space for you to create for yourself because a lot of times your own art is healing for you first before it's healing for anyone else and um so that could look like you know you journaling you painting or um for you, you do your music, um, you know, creating, I like reach out to you, send me a playlist because now when I'm creating, I love to listen to my lo-fi um, because it's enough. It's not, I like music. So I love to listen to music, but when I'm like listening to songs, I love, I'm going to sing with it. I'm going to be jamming with it. And so it's a distraction, right? But now I can actually have on some lo-fi that's not um, so, so it doesn't take my thought process away that I can still complete, uh, the, the, the work that I need to do. Um, so yeah, so it's just always recognizing, um, recognizing that I think during the creative process though, you know, we're looking at, you know, initiative, right? So you follow the process of it, but it's the initiative to do it. Um, the communion flow and then closure. And I think for a lot of times with creatives, we don't necessarily want to follow a process, <laughs> you know, but there's a process to everything. Preach. And even in creativity, there is a process. Um, and I think that it kind of ties back into, um, you know, if we're going to talk about or throw it in there, just virtues and scriptures. So if we're looking at wisdom, uh, you know, understanding and knowledge, um, it helps us to, you know, build out, you know, ingenu ingenuity, sustainability and profitability um, through creative producti productivity. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. And it's like, I think as creatives, it's like, it's like, I don't think it's like we don't like a process we don't like a standardized process that gets repetitive and boring <laughs> sure. it's like we want the yeah. process to be able to change as we feel throughout the day and that may work when you're by yourself but if you're trying to create a structured business with mm -hmm. a proper framework with proper systems that people can follow that doesn't work if you yeah <laughs> i agree i agree and i think that um you know that like that's what i said that's where it kind of becomes the challenge right or becomes a little bit more of a difficulty um to work through but i think that just because you have um a process or we won't maybe that's a little bit too rigid but if you have a flow um that you use in your productivity that doesn't negate you being able to now create a unique work or creating um, a unique structure, um, unique solutions, creative solutions. It's just that like, that's why I said, I think creativity uh, spans all the spectrums. If you're looking at leadership, you're looking at community engagement, you're looking at politics. I mean, whatever you want to look at and you tie the creativity into it and you follow that flow, it doesn't necessarily have to be dedicated to art, right? But it's looking at now your creative leader or your creative your creative solutions um, within corporate America now brings um, an answer to a problem that people had, but you just, you know, thought of a, this creative way to do it. So I think that when you look at it that way, that um, it doesn't become as rigid because now you're knowing you're, you know that you have the opportunity to use it across the spectrum, as well as um, just because you happen to use this type of flow doesn't mean that it's now going to have the same outcome. And then your flow changes all the time, I think. Um, I think that for me, I've gone through so many different um, trainings, I guess, um, from, uh, you know, different things. And I think, uh, you know, I used to journal every day. I don't journal every day now, but I went through that phase of journaling every day. And I think for certain people, which I appreciate because I was able to go through different structures to know and understand how people um, handle these areas or what could be useful to them. So for a person that loves to write, journaling is perfect for you, you know, but for a person that might be, you know, a speaker or for a person that, you know, might be um, a poet who loves words. OK, but then now you can do poetry. Right. So I think that being able to go th go through that, um, go through that, those steps, it's a flow. So it's not to say that, like, OK, well, now every day I have to write. No, it's every day you get to write every day. You get to use your creativity to build a new piece. You never know, um, you know, if I'm a poet or, you know, and I want to now write use my flow to create this piece you never know who it could be helping it could be helping yourself right so it's that own personal creative wellness that you're working through or now you can use it to help someone else so that's how i always look at it too got it see and you said something with intention that i really want to highlight you said it's not that i have to i get to and that mindset in itself is that's 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 if anyone's watching that's the game changer that's it <laughs> where you change your yes. mindset from i have to to i get to 
you open yourself up to the newer possibilities and to parts of yourself that you probably never knew existed because now the intention is this is an opportunity not something that i have to do not an obligation it's yeah. like you're, you're switching the words up a little bit but um <laughs> I don't want to take too much of your time. I have one last question I wanted to ask you just from your experience. And I, I do believe that this will give value towards a lot of people who are just starting up. And that is how has unrealistic expectation impacted small business owners who are not seasoned in their field? Oh, Woo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, you just say you was going to throw me a curveball. Um, one more time. No so, problem. So basically, how has unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. that small business owners have? Let's just say, for instance, um, let's just go with content creators. We're here on YouTube. Let's mm -hmm. just say somebody who has not recorded a video a day. They like not made a video. And they said in one year, I want one million subscribers. How has people who have those types of unrealistic, unrealistic expectations Mm -hmm. You know, how has that impacted them? In, sure. Yeah. Um, I think that, you know, that type of that type of impact often is negative. Right. Because you set kind of this unrealistic goal um, to attain. And it's not unrealistic in the sense that, like, you won't ever attain it. But I think that that's why um, smart goals are relevant. <laughs> that's why. And it's funny because um, a lot of times when I speak to people, they don't even have anything you know as far as as far as like you know planning and stuff and it's great to have like ideas and concepts um but and, and that's where i come in right the creative strategist no but it's getting you to that next uh step and phase right so it's you recognizing that um you know you have to have these smart measurable goals right that you have to like put in place so it's like is it unreasonable to say that within a year you have a million probably um unless you go viral or you can say, hey, I'm going to now structure this over the course of a few years. So it's still the goal, right? It's still the goal to reach a million, but it's just a means. And I think that when you make it unrealistic, um, you become frustrated. You want to give up. Like, I mean, there's so many things I think that tie into that emotionally, right? That affect your wellness, um, that affect you being able to now produce well, um, produce your work um, or, even, um, or even reach your goals. Um, so I think that it's not to say, cause I don't want to say that, you know, we can't have these goals that are, um, lofty or like these goals that are huge, have it absolutely, but not have that plan to back it up, have that structure to back it up. And I think that as creatives, we, 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 we try to avoid it. I don't know. Or we try to like skip around it. And it's like, yeah, you can be creative. And yeah, you might reach that million in a year. No, if you reach it ahead of time, great. Come on, dude, like clap it up for you. But more than likely, if we're following, you know, a standard of, you know, whatever it is, because don't get me wrong. I think for me that we're in a time of like acceleration, right? We're, we're in a place where like, you know, if I put out a post, someone from, you know, across the world could reach out to me and now I have a million followers or you can go viral and that could happen overnight. But that's not going to be everyone's story. And so a lot of times it's a process. <laughs> it is a process and everyone, we all go through our own process. But I think that the more that you are looking at um, unrealistic goals, you become more and more frustrated and then you want to give up and you give up on an idea that probably can help more people um than it would harm you know what i mean i'm not saying like we're, we're trying to cause harm but it would help more people um if it was done right than opposed to it being that like and i mean that's why i said it's, it's kind of a hard place to be because a lot of times as artists and creatives we're the first in our field or we're the first in our space or place and i mean yeah there's a lot of content creators yeah there's a lot of this and a lot of that but you might be the not the first because a lot of a lot of things are kind of remade or redone but i'm, I'm saying it in the sense of um, you might be the first and you might not know anyone personally, right? Or, but I think in the world that we live in today, you know, get a mentor, get someone that knows where you've been. And even if they don't have exactly, you know, um, like for me, I don't, I don't specifically know anyone who is in creative wellness, but I've seen a few on Instagram. Will I reach out? Absolutely. Do I have, um, 
you know, mentors in a space of like business or finance, because finance is not my area. Do not call me for finance, right? <laughs> but no, that's for real. Don't call me for finance. Don't get me wrong. Being a good steward over my finances. But what I will say is that like, don't call me for any financial questions. I, I wouldn't be able to um, help you in that space or place. But what I do know is that for someone that has more knowledge, and I think that for this generation, um, it becomes a little bit more difficult because they're in a space of kind of like they know everything, um, which we all went through that. Right. So I know when I was a kid or like a teenager coming up, I thought I knew way more than my mom or like, you know, my elders or for people that were older than me. And so now that I'm like in my 30s and I'm looking at kids or I'm looking at teenagers and I'm like, oh, God, they think they know everything. And I'm like, I feel so old. But beyond that, you go through that phase. We all go through that phase and stage. But I think that um, they're kind of trying to skip the space of having the mentor. Right. Or having someone in their life that actually does know better or might have more wisdom to impart that knowledge to them and to be able to help them to get to that next level and next stage. Um, it's okay. It's okay to collaborate. It's okay to partnership. It's okay to reach out to others who, um, because I know even in my own, um, in my own time, I've reached out to people and, you know, maybe it might ha not have gone as I would have particularly liked, you know, there's certain areas and arenas that I might not have had experience in. And because there, it's been so limited in that, that it might not be so many people to help. Right. So you might be the first. But at the same time, that doesn't mean that there isn't a, someone else that could help you or lead you or guide you um, in that. And um, like, I think as a starter or as a yeah, as a startup or as an entrepreneur that is just starting up, um, simple mistakes, I think are made because you don't do research. I think that a lot of times, you know, when people talk about business plans or people talk about, you know, putting together this proposal or your ideas and stuff and writing it all out, if you would have done that, you would have skipped, not necessarily skipped, but you would have been able to um, cover a lot of the areas that you're kind of, I guess, trying to avoid or, or you know, glaze over. You kind of can't jump ahead because then you're still gonna have to go back and redo it anyway. So it's like, why not do it? the right way the first time mm -hmm. um as opposed to it being that now you know you're two months down the two months two years down the line and then you have to still go back kind of and now do your business plan right because you need to do your market research or whatever else that you need to do it would be easier just to do it right off the back but i think that there's so many tools at our disposal now that um if they just i mean there's accelerated programs all over right there's coaches that are popping up that's a lot of that's one of the fastest growing industries right now is like kind of the self self help self improvement industry and find a course right go on youtube which we are on go on youtube find a video find a course find an instagram uh page that is doing what you want to do and i'm not saying in the sense of copying it no but what i'm saying is in the sense of you can reach out to them even collaborate i think that a lot of people are open to extend information um even, you know, it doesn't have to always necessarily be paid. I know for me, every week I do, or every other week rather, I do a community co-working um, co session and I invite people in so that they can brainstorm their ideas so that they can um, increase their productivity, get work done and just have that support. And what am I doing? I'm giving knowledge. You know what I mean? If I know something, yeah, I'm a creative strategist, but that doesn't mean that now I'm going to withhold information. You know, if it's something that I know that they need help with and that I can um, give them the knowledge, that doesn't mean, you know, that I'm just going to, you know, always be giving out information for free, obviously, but it's the means of that getting them to that next step. A little quick tidbit can be so helpful to someone since I already kind of like have experience in that area or I know someone who, you know, spoke to me already about this particular thing and it's able to help them to get to that next uh, step or phase in life. So perfect. And, and I did, I, I want to just highlight a few things because someone who's in my early 30s myself, it's like you don't you could easily think that you know everything, but it's like you could always learn from somebody. It's like you mentioned earlier about, you know, people going viral. And one of the things about viralicity, a lot of people don't understand the framework behind that let's just say you do go viral are you prepared to maintain what got mm -hmm. you found in the first place are you are you ready to, to make, pivot your content to be only what well, why people found you in the first place because mm -hmm. it's like and do you understand and going you said going into your market research do you know who your who your audience is i find that a lot of content creators in their late 20s to their early 30s they don't know who they're speaking to 
they don't yeah. know who they want to reach they don't know who their message is for they just create and they think because what i created is good because i put in the effort behind this i i polished this up this is worth watching and it's like no customer service comes to, comes into play here who are you <laughs> who are you servicing why why do they need to watch it's like youtube is the second biggest search engine engine in, in the world and it's like if we treat it as such that's how it goes beyond just creating content that go, that that goes into you creating an actual business that is worth people giving their time to so I do want to thank you for, ha for coming on. It's like I definitely learned a bit. Well, I'm, I know I'm going to pick up a few more nuggets as I'm doing going through the editing of this, but this was really good. Do you have anything lastly you want to um, say before we close out? Oh, um, do I want to say? Yeah, I mean, you can um, find me. Yeah, where, where, where can I find you? Yeah, where can I find you? <laughs> you, can, uh, you can find me online. Um, I'm under Tahina Marset um, on Instagram. That's my personal page. And then my business page is um, Marset Studio at Marset Studio. Um, we'll drop it. The links will be dropped, I'm sure. Um, and then my VA site, I will also give to as well. And then I'll have um, my MarsetStudio.com. My site will be up there as well. Perfect, perfect. Well, everyone, I hope this episode has blessed you, has given you the knowledge that you have needed. And till next time, we thank you for watching. As always, if you like this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. And most of all, most of all, you make sure you share this with a friend. This is Avada and Tahita, and we are out. Take care, y'all.